what would be the most useful trait for a killer wishing to sneak upon an unsuspecting victim. He is specializing in sneaking to survivors, pretty much the same way you sneak into fridge every night while no one pays attention. Wrath was the second killer released during the beta of TBD. He got somewhat complicated story around his lore, realm, and overall release, as pretty much all of it was switched last minute before. But anyway, hug your lucky bell and let's dive into Wrath's story. Wraith's real name is Philip Ojimo. In his realm, well, it's a little complicated. At the release, it was out of heaven records, but it wasn't so at the very beginning. During the development, Wraith Realm was swamp, but due to some technical issues, they couldn't prepare it for the final version, so they just moved him to Outer Heaven. Even though that the swamp was later used as a Hag's Realm, it was right there from the very beginning, which might make you ask who was the original killer for Outer Heaven Wreckers. Oh, that's easy, it's Bob. Well, you know, Bob. That's just Michael Myers. Yes, but most probably they got license for Michael by this time, so there were no need for Bob anymore. But anyway, let's go back to Wraith. Since I have no idea what the original lore for Wraith was, the best we can do is just check the current one. Philip was born in Nigeria. The civil war broke in the country, and it was increasingly dangerous with every day. His father made a lucky bell for Philip. It was ringing loudly when struck. Philip lost everything to this war. His parents, friends, neighbors, even his humanity. One day Philip enters another decimated village, under the cover of darkness, and he sees the crew, a killing crew. Maybe it was the very ones who killed his friends, or even his parents. He doesn't want to forgive, he wants them to suffer like they made his people suffer. They should disappear in flames, same way they made his friends and family disappear. And for a moment, just a moment, he is the angel of death. Philip came to USA in search of American Dream, and he was able to find the job at Outer Heaven Records quite fast. It was a shady looking business, but hey, you gotta pay your bills, so Philip didn't care that much. Besides, what could possibly go wrong? His job was to fix cars and handle a crusher. Until one day, he noticed some blood coming from an uncrushed car. He opened the trunk and found a young man gagged and tied with panic in his eyes. Philip frees him, but man can only run for 10 feet before his boss stops him and slit his throat. Confused, Philip demands answers, and he got them. For his boss, he was simply an executioner for a mafia, as every car more or less had a soul trapped in it. Philip was enraged. He grabbed his boss and threw him in a crasher with only his head sticking out, when it stopped compressing. Philip ripped the head with the spine, and he left, and was never seen again. Wraith is a stealth killer. Overall, his stats is pretty much regular, but it all changes when he uses his power, Wailing Bell. By ringing your bell, you will become cloaked, and that is completely changing all your stats. You are becoming much faster and you don't have any terror areas whatsoever. The downside is that, well, even though you still can interact with every object on the map, you cannot attack. You need to uncloak by ringing your bell a second time, which actually takes forever. While you're ringing your bell to get uncloaked, the survivor can go to the edge of the map and back. 
To compensate for that, you get a minuscule speed burst for a second. But still, there is no need to do it in the open. Your best bet is to sneak to unsuspecting survivor and uncloak before they notice you. But remember, even though you're almost completely invisible, survivors can still hear you. And boy, do they hear you! Wraith sounds like an old pag who's not even trying to hide his excitement. Speaking of which, let's check his strong and weak sides. Wraith's biggest strength is his stealth, obviously, no surprises here. Even though you're not completely invisible, survivors still can see something moving, it is much harder to spot. So most common tactic for Wraith would be hit or run, as your ability will help you to get the first hit relatively easy, but it's not as useful to confirm the kill. Usually, if you're not sure you can get survivors into a dying state quite quickly, it will be best to switch to another target. Second is Wraith movement speed. In clocked form, Wraith runs with astonishing speed of 6 meters per second, meaning you could easily control a lot of generators, applying gen regression perks and spooking survivors. And since you're getting small speed boosts when uncloaking, it actually also helps you a lot during the end game, when there's not so much pellets left and it's much harder to just run away from you. The biggest weakness of Wraith is actually inability to attack while clocked. As I mentioned before, it takes ages to unclog, so if you get a pretty open map, it would be hard to get ahead at the beginning. And, same way as Trapper, the Wailing Bell power does not have any chase helping traits, so once you get your first hit, it might take very long time to seal the deal. But unlike Trapper, Wraith does have a very good add-ons and perks that could improve your ability pride sites. Wraith add-ons does improve his ability significantly, and picking them might change your playstyle dramatically. All seeing allows you to either see survivors are within 8 meters of you, or dunness of generators around the map while you're cloaked. Shadow Dance increase your action speed, such as breaking walls, damaging generators and vaulting windows. Blink add-ons will help you to cloak faster, which is not as useful as it is already quite fast and usually you would have an issue with uncloaking rather than cloaking. Speaking of which, Swift Hunt doing exactly that. It increases your uncloaking speed, leaving less time for survivors to understand what's going on. Windstorm will help you to increase your movement speed even further, and Clappers will either silence a wailing bell ringing or at least make it impossible to discern the distance and direction. The rest is pretty much useless, well, maybe except Serpent. It will make you unclog fully once you break a pallet or damage a generator, which could be useful if you're going to pair it with Shadow Dance and Brutal Strength, so you could shred through all pallets without giving survivors any distance. Speaking of perks, well, nobody is perfect. Wraith teachable perks are horrible. Predator will make scratch marks from survivors to be much closer together which is not that useful, because usually you can pretty much easily find the survivor. Bloodhound adds some toxic color to your survivor's blood. And Shadowborn is very addicting. All it does is simply expanding your field of view by 15 degrees while you're not in the chase. So, no obvious benefits. But man, is it comfortable to look at. But if we're going to look at the perks that Wraith can benefit from, ooh, there's a ton and a few more. You can pick Bamboozle, play with your food, or any gen regression perks. Having such a high mobility combined with the stealths opens a lot of possibilities for experimentation. Combining different perks and add-ons can change your gameplay completely. You can equip Shadow Dance with gen regression perks such as Oppression, Pop the Weasel, Overcharge, and create a lot of pressure on survivors trying to scrape for any progress. Or you can combine Windstorm with Play with your food to achieve some insane speed, and Swift Hunt with a Sloppy Butcher can turn your hit-and-run strategy in real pain for any survivor. You can experiment and find a lot of useful combinations that will fit your current mode and playstyle. Wraith is much more dynamic and interesting killer than Trapper. 
His power allows him to adopt multiple playstyles and shine in specialization, like keeping survivors injured or constantly applying pressure to generators. But at the same time, he's not all-rounder. He can't get all perks and add-ins at the same time. So before a match, you would need to make a choice, which might actually backfire if you choose poorly. And prepared survivors can still push through your tactics, so it's not like a guarantee win. Overall, Wraith place and roster of killers is constantly shifting, not only because of his abilities and constant buffs and nerfs he receives, but also he's very sensitive to overall changes in the game, be it chain repair regression or healing speed. So be vigilant and alert, as after all your tricks and perks, you're still just a normal killer, and it all depends on your performance most of all.